What is the greatest danger facing the church in America today? What is the greatest threat to the American church? I've seen that question posed in many different ways in numerous articles over the last 10 years, and the typical answer is something like apathy or the prosperity gospel, or a watering down of the gospel of Jesus Christ, all internal threats against the church. And I've always found this to be a, a somewhat ridiculous question. I think the greatest threat to the American church is a thousand different threats that vary from church to church to church. The threats to my church are very different in comparison to the Methodist church around the corner, and we are both in the same community. But today, I think that there is one greatest threat to the American church. And it is not an internal threat, but an external one. The greatest danger to the American church and the European church as well is Marxism. Marxism in all of its forms, be it political, cultural, or as Rod Dreher calls it in Live Not By Lies, soft totalitarianism. It's been said that more Christians were martyred for their faith in the 20th century than all previous centuries of the church combined. I'm not sure there's any way to prove that statement, but I do think you could easily say more Christians were martyred for their faith in the 20th century than any of the centuries that came before. And why did so many Christians die for their faith over the last 100 years? Marxism. The killing of Christians in the Soviet Union, North Korea, China, and everywhere else communism and Marxism have spread was a horror unlike anything the church has ever seen. And if you've read a lot of church history, you know that the church has seen a lot of horrors. There's no bigger threat to your church or my own than Marxism right now. And in the form of Marxism, which Rod Dreher calls soft totalitarianism. Marxism is on a shocking rise in popularity in America. In Live Not By Lies, by examining the stories of Christians who suffered under communism in the last century, Dreher shows powerfully how those same threats are rising in America today. From a political and a liberty perspective, there may be no more important book in Christianity today. Live Not By Lies is broken into two equally important sections, although I do wish that there was a third section at the end of the book, which may have ended up being the most important section of the whole book. In the first section of Live Not By Lies, Understanding Soft Totalitarianism, Dreyer takes the time to define this term, what he means by it, how it relates to the hard totalitarianism of the 20th century, and also he is showing the rise of it in America and the danger that it presents to all of us. A good follow-up to these chapters would be to listen to Vody Bachman and his teaching on cultural Marxism. I'll try to remember to put a link to some of his teachings in the description below. So Dreyer shows us the dangers that we are facing from soft totalitarianism today. And then in section two, he shows us how to confront those dangers. And I think the section on how to confront the dangers of soft totalitarianism are great because they are all achievable. And frankly, they are recommendations that every Christian should do whether they are confronted with Marxism or not. You could say that when we fail to do what he recommends, when we don't value truth, when we don't strengthen our families, when we don't stand in solidarity with others in the church, when we do not possess a willingness to suffer. So when our families dissolve, when we allow others to change truth and comfort becomes priority number one, at that point we are opening up our country our communities, our churches, and our own hearts to Marxism. And the threat of Marxism is so disgusting, so vile, so cruel. There is nothing in church history as evil. And there's a lot of evil in church history. 
reading the stories of the suffering under the communist regimes in Poland and Czechoslovakia, it is a powerful reminder of how grave a threat this is. So we must all stand against the lies. There were so many good quotes in this book, but I want to read for you a small portion of the book that stuck with me the most because it illustrates the importance of books such as Live Not By Lies, the importance of taking the evil nature of Marxism and shining a light on it and letting future generations know of the dangers that are before us. There are young people who live close enough to the Betovo field to have heard the sound of the gunshots back in the Great Terror. The signs of the mass murder here have been preserved in granite for all to see. Yet if not for Father Krillo, visiting their classrooms to tell this story, the great-grandchildren of the murdered generation would have minds untroubled by the memory of mass murder. People need to know the danger of Marxism. As politicians today are pushing Marxist philosophy, as they boldly display images of Marxist propaganda, we need to tell the next generation where all this so-called progress leads. It leads to the end of the family, the end of the church, and the death of freedom to walk in the truth. Now, the third part of the book that I wish was in it but is missing, I would entitle A Call to Win. Dreyer tells us how we need to prepare ourselves to survive under soft totalitarianism and when it inevitably turns hard and cruel. But there's no call in the book to win to win today, to win the hearts and minds of Americans in this generation to stand against Marxism and totalitarianism, to not let cultural Marxism take over all, how to fight back against the corporations, the media, and more who are seeking to rule our lives through lies. Now, I can't say I have a lot of good ideas personally on how to win the day, but I would have loved a call to, to band together for us to insist on truth and freedom and the importance of families. I, I think a good call could be made in this book for the homeschooling movement, for Christians also to move into, to work at Google, Facebook, Apple, and all of these corporations that have been inundated by Marxism, and for Christians to be in their midst and trying to strive to bring sanity back to these corporations. So while I wish there was a third section of the book, I want to make sure that everybody is clear. I loved the two we are given. I highly recommend Live Not By Lies. Read it. Talk about it with your family. And let me know what you think about this very important book in the comments of this video. If you enjoyed this review and you want to stay engaged in the powerful world of Christian literature, please subscribe to the Rev Reads YouTube channel.